Welcome to part 2 of the tutorial on how to use DIS 6502 with the example of SynCalc. Just a short recap what we did last time. We loaded the ATR file to disassemble the bootloader uh, of SynCalc and we saved it all in a workspace. So I'm going to load the previous workspace. And there we see we have a segment that starts at 9000. The first six bytes were the boot sector header, so it's the code starts at 9006, up to 1C FFF. That's the bootloader area. Now, this is an ATR file, and we saw in the bootloader that the bootloader then loads subsequent parts, the actual main parts, by setting the target address like 700, the start sector, the number of sectors, and then it jumps to a load sector routine. Yeah, and the same for data that's at 1E00, so behind this area, and data that's at, or code, that's at 8000. So how can we verify this? When we boot up the ATR in Altera, I press F1 to speed up the loading. Then we end up with the actual program. We can go to the debugger and examine the area where everything is at. What we can also do is we can type in a debugger command, which is rather lengthy, which is why I prepared it. So this is a break trace on the CO vector. So whenever the program enters that CO vector, the co uh, following parts are displayed on the console. Yeah, this is similar to a printf command. And because the disk image is still in, I can now press control uh, shift f5 to trigger a cold start. And we will see the sector that is loaded, the target address it is loaded to, and the length. And the result is the IAO return code. 01 means everything's fine. So we see where it's loading. up to the end of the 48k of RAM at BFFF. Then there is some more uh, init information, and that, but it's not that relevant now. So let's see, this is loading the first six bytes of the boot sector for by the operating system. Then it found that there's a boot loader <coughs> and it loads every sector into area 400 where the cassette buffer is copies it to the target memory and actually at this location, at the end of this sector, the bootloader that we have disassembled is started. The bootloader then continues to load first parts starting at sector 9 to the address 700 up to address 12FF, yeah, so the end of the sector that starts here. Then it skips some memory, that's exactly the memory where the bootloader itself is located. Then it continues at 1E up to 2FFF. And the last part of the program is at 8000 2BFFF. So what does it mean? So we have the lower parts of the memory that are not relevant. We have the actual program area that normally starts at 700, and we see that it continues to load up to, yeah, let's see, 1, 2 something. Yeah, ba basically 2, 1, 2. So let's see what's in that area. We use the memory inspector to check that. So this is 800, 900. Let's see if there's something familiar. Oh, here we see something that's called DOS Sys. So it can have something to do with DOS. Unfortunately, there is no scrolling through the memory layout yet in Altera. So we do it this way to examine if there is something that we sounds familiar. Oh, here we have something. If you read it in reverse, that's three sectors. 
So what we have here is actually DOS. So some kind of DOS, maybe DOS 1.0, DOS 2.0, but it's a DOS. And it's also the typical area of memory in which a DOS resides, starting at 7, 000, uh, 700. So for our purposes, we would basically ignore that part. So the relevant parts for us start again at 1E00, and they end at BFFF. So what we would do now is we would write the memory in that area to a dump file, which we can then further analyze. So I also prepared that. Oh, actually I started at 1900 to include the um, the bootloader that we already disassembled also. So the bootloader started at 1900, so we write the whole memory area starting at 900. 1900. So I write it to a file called dump. Now I here have a file called dump because it's a bit too unspecific, I rename it. So, and this is going to be the basis now for the rest next part of the analysis.